Ross Lesson 18, he's entitled this uh, Uses of the Tenses in Sequence, and uh, we're, we're dealing here with how in Hebrew you uh, either tell a story from a, the perspective of what happened in the past through a series of events, or how you can um, maybe tell somebody what's going to happen or give someone a set of instructions for what they will do in the future. And these are called sequences of, of clauses where one clause follows upon another, uh, where there's, there's a sort of continuity uh, between them. Now, um, I'm going to start with the past time narrative tense, and uh, WCI is the abbreviation I'm going to use for it, and I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, what I mean by that and what others mean by that in just a moment. But let's, uh, let's begin with this little introductory section here. Uh, many languages have a special literary tense form that is used strictly for narrating past time events. So if you've ever studied French, they have something called an imperfect, which is a way of talking about what uh, was happening. And then there's a, uh, a tense called the passé simple, which is the, the simple past, and it's used for just simple past time action, narrative time. Um, Hebrew, likewise, has a form that is used as the backbone for a narrative, to push forward the sequence of narrated events in a storyline. Explanations of this form have led to its being labeled in a variety of ways. And, and so um, you'll see here that uh, WCI is uh, one abbreviation for this type of a, of a form. And that stands for Vav Consecutive Imperfect. That is to say, the form looks like an imperfect form, which is what we just learned in Chapter 17, but with a special Vav in front of it that makes it a pastime narrative form that occurs in consecutive actions. John did this, and then he did this, and then he did this, and you will see these forms used for such uh, action. Uh, Ross refers to this as the preterite plus vav consecutive, uh, pret plus wc, preterite plus vav consecutive. And um, here, what he's getting at is that the, the form itself seems to be a preterite form. The word preterite refers to a past tense form. Uh, not so, so people who use this language will want to say, look, the, the form that's used here is not technically speaking an imperfect form. It looks like the imperfect, but it isn't the imperfect. It's actually a prefix conjugation form that, uh, that's called the preterite, and it, it has a special pointing with the vav. So, they call these a preterite plus vav consecutive. Uh, others like to just call it a vayiktol form. And vayiktol uh, is a, it's a rather nondescript term, uh, but it's, it's using the old paradigm verb katal, which means to kill, in the form that this tense takes. So a special vav with a pathak and a doubling dot, and then what looks like the imperfect. So yiktol would be he will kill, vayiktol, that would be translated as he killed, as a past time form, okay? And so they, they just call this the vayiktol, based on that paradigm form. And then some grammarians talk about this as a vav conversive imperfect. That is to say, the imperfect usually indicates uh, things that are future, uh, and then when you have this special vav po uh, vowel pointing in front, it, uh, it appears to convert it to a past time form. So some call it a vav conversive. Uh, when I learned Hebrew, I used the expression WCI for the form, and so that's what I've used, even though I am uh, happy to acknowledge that, um, so I'll just put an asterisk here, this is, this is the one I've, I've been using. I'm happy to acknowledge that it's not genuinely an imperfect form, it really is probably an old preterite form that happens to be identical in form to the imperfect most of the time, although sometimes you can tell the difference between the two, and we'll talk about those when we get to them in our studies. Now, what I'd like to do here is just talk about how you form these WCI forms, okay? Now, um, the, the most distinctive uh, part of this form is the vav that's attached to the form that looks like a cal imperfect. If you look here, uh, the way to say he appointed is va yifkod. 
va yif kod. Now, what do you see about the vav here? This is the normal way to point the conjunction vav. Remember how we learned back, I think it was in chapter 6, that whenever you want to stick a, a conjunction vav on a form, it's always a prefix, and it comes standard with a vocal shiva, right? But there are also some times when the vav becomes a shurik. When did we see that? When the vav comes before one of the bump letters. Remember the bump letters? Bet, mem, and pe are formed with the lips. They're labials. And whenever the v comes before those, it becomes an u. All right? My point here is just to show you that what we have here on these WCI or Vayiktol forms is a vav with a pathak underneath and then a doubling dot in the prefix consonant. And that is not like any of the vavs we've ever seen before. Okay, so this is a special pointing of the vav. It's unusual. And this should jump out at us whenever we uh, see it in a WCI form. So vayif code could be translated as he appointed. It's always past time. And let's, let's compare that to just the imperfect over here, yif code. You see the difference? Yif code, he will appoint. Put the special vav pointing in front of it. Vayif code, he appointed. All right? Tif code, she will appoint. Notice I have a dagish lene in the tav. Why is there a dagish lene in the tav? Tav is a begadkafat letter. And begadkafat letters come standard with a dagish lene in them. Over here, vatif code, what kind of dagesh do you see in that tav? That is a dagesh forte because all WCI forms come with a dagesh forte. All right? So that is a dagesh forte after the vav. So there, dagesh forte. Uh, so vatif code, she appointed. The imperfect tif code, you will appoint. Vatif code, you appointed. So basically, what do you see? You see that the WCI forms are are basically the same as the imperfects, but with the special vav and its vowel pointing. Okay, that's it. So if you learned the imperfect last chapter, you know the WCI forms in this chapter. All right, so let's read the forms. Ready? Vayif code. Vatif code. So he appointed, she appointed. Vatif code. Vatif kadi. You appointed, male, female. And then vaf code. Vaf code is I appointed. Now, uh, what should I have had here? Normally, for the pointing, I'd want a pathak and a doubling dot, right? Can I put a doubling dot in an olive? No. no, because olive is a guttural, and gutturals don't take no dagesh forte from anybody. So when we reject that dagesh forte, the short a vowel, pathak, compensatorily lengthens and becomes a kamets. Okay? So that's what's happened there. Now let's look at the uh, next forms here. Vayif kadu, everybody? So they appointed, and it's 3MP, so they are men. Vatif kodna? They appointed, and it's female they. Vatif kadu? And vatif kodna? So y'all appointed, male then female. And then vannif code is we appointed. Again, the forms are all identical to the imperfects to the right, except those have no vavs there, and these have the, the vav with the special vowel pointing. Okay? So uh, from our notes, what we see is uh, for the distinctive features of the WCI form as, uh, is that these WCI forms, these past narrative uh, tense forms, uh, these are all built off of the prefix conjugations, so you will see those nutty prefixes. The nutty prefixes are noon, tav, yod, and olive. Okay? Um, this, uh, this preterite tense that we're seeing, these vavs attached to, happens to be identical to the imperfect, but most grammarians now agree that it's not the same tense. They just happen to look the same. <clears throat> the special prefix vav before these nutty prefixes is a vav pathak 
followed by dagesh forte and the prefix consonant. All right. So whenever you see that doubling dot there and you see that pathak under the vav, you're looking at a WCI form. Number three, and this is important, always, always, always translate these with past time value. Whenever you see a WCI, it will be past. Remember, the perfect tense is usually past, but sometimes can be present. The imperfect tense is usually future, but it could be past or present. WCIs are always past tense. You haven't heard me use the word always very much in Hebrew, have you? So this is the case. We're looking at past time action when we see a WCI form. Now, my two ways to, to, to label this form will be WCI, or I'll sometimes use the expression vayiktol. So just be aware. Sometimes I'll just call this a vayiktol also. Let's look at an example here. And here we have uh, under number three, Shema Adonai Otham. That means Yahweh heard them. And that's a perfect form of Shema. Yahweh heard them. Uh, there's verb, subject, direct object, right? Uh, and my perfects are usually past tense. Yahweh heard them. And then the next clause begins with a WCI form. Vayizkor burrito. Vayizkor burrito. This is from Zakar. Remember, yizkor, as an imperfect, means he will remember. But vayizkor means, and he remembered, past time. Burrito, he remembered his burrito. No, I'm just kidding. So he remembered his covenant. There's that 3MS pronoun. He remembered his covenant. Okay, so perfect starts the sequence. The next thing in the action sequentially, a WCI form is used for it. Now, under number four, if the sequence of events in, a, in uh, the WCI forms is broken, that is to say, if I'm you know, narrating events, someone did this, and then someone did this, and then someone did this, and then I want to stop the narration for a moment and either give some given a side or provide some background information or tell you what didn't happen, then my new clause that breaks the sequence is going to begin with a conjunction vav attached to a non-verb, and then that aside will start, that break in the action, and then when I want to go back to the storyline event, when I want to resume my sequence of narrative actions, then I'll go back to a WCI form again. So let me give you an example here, okay? I have a sequence of three verbal actions in this example. Halach, vayilkodota, veloshavat, vayishma. Three verb, or four verbs here, okay, and I've numbered them for you. Halach, he went, okay? That starts with the perfect, which is normally past time. Vayilkodota. What's the next thing he did? He captured it. That's the three FS pronoun attached to the direct object marker. So he went past time and then followed by a WCI in sequence and he captured it. The next thing becomes a kind of break in the action because what we're saying is what he didn't do. Velo Shavat. And notice that I have a Vav not attached to a verb but to a nonverb. Here it's attached to the negative particle. And I've switched back to the perfect. And he did not rest. Okay? And then when I want to resume the actions of what did happen, by Yishma, and he listened, I've gone back to a WCI form here, which is all of these are past, right? But they're not sequential. Or, or actually, these two are sequential to each other. This didn't happen, and then the sequence picks up again with the WCI. Okay, so we're resuming the narrative action. Here, this is what didn't happen. All right? So I could state what didn't happen as my break in the narrative, or I could, again, do something parenthetical. Um, John made hot dogs for lunch, and then John ate them. Aside, now John was allergic to hot dogs, and then he threw up, okay? 
That would be the same sort of thing. He did this, he did this. Parenthetical information. Oh, by the way, he's allergic to hot dogs. I would use a, a perfect, and then I'd resume he threw up with a WCI form. All right. So uh, that's the way uh, Hebrew does narrative, mainly through kicking off the narrative with a perfect and then following it up sequentially with WCI forms and pastime. Now, the second part of our handout here has to do with um, non-past or future sequences, and these are going to use uh, WCP forms. Now, uh, in genres other than historical pastime narrative, uh, the writer or the speaker might want to express a series of events that are future in their time frame, such as in predictive uh, prophetic text, um, on that day, this will happen, and then this will happen, and then this will happen. Or it may be simply instructional materials. Hey, buddy, I'm going to send you to the store. And when you go, you will buy this, and you will pay with this, and you will do this. Okay? So it doesn't have to be prophetic material. So example, you will go to the city, and you will find a mule, and you will purchase it, and so forth. Now, to express this series in Hebrew, a simple perfect conjugation form is used. Remember, the perfect conjugation pattern is the suffix conjugation, right? The forms that we associate with uh, those personal endings. So the perfect uh, conjugation form is used with a simple conjunction vav prefixed with normal vowel pointing for the vav. That is to say, normally a vocal shiva. Usually, an imperfect form is going to initiate the non-pastime sequence, and then the series of events after that imperfect will be continued with these WCP or vav consecutive perfect forms. So we'll um, take a look at some examples here so you can see this uh, in, in action, so to speak. Uh, first one, we have Yeshma Adonai Otam. And why don't you say these with me? Yeshma Adonai Otam. V'zachar <laughs> Baritho. All right, so uh, these are using very similar, um, it's using very similar language to what we, we had for our earlier examples. But notice, I'm starting with an imperfect, Yeshma Adonai. And that's usually what time frame? Usually future, right? So Yahweh will hear Otham, them. So future time, Yahweh will hear them. And then the next thing that will happen is given in a WCP form. A perfect form with a vav in front. V'zachar baritho. And we're going to translate that as future in keeping with the imperfect that started the sequence. And he will remember his covenant. Okay? Now, if all you did was before today, if you had walked into class and I had written this on the board, you would say, ah, v is an and zachar is perfect and past, right? And he remembered. But now you know that in sequence with an imperfect, this could be a WCP form, and it's indicating non-past action in sequence with a non-past imperfect. Future, future. So whatever the nuances of the imperfect that comes first, the WCP, WCP forms will usually have the same sort of nuance. So if it's just future, then this one will be just future. Yahweh will hear, and he will remember. Okay, uh, the next example. Now, why don't you say this with me? Yis Rafu et Ha'ir Valachadu et Ha'am. Okay, so these are direct object markers here. Uh, imperfect is future time usually. They will burn. What will they burn? The city. And then the next thing they will do in sequence, it's going to be started with the WCP, and they will capture the people. Okay, it would not make very good sense to translate this as they will burn the city and they captured the people because those are two completely different time frames, aren't they? Right. So whenever you have an imperfect followed by something that looks like a perfect, if there's a vav on it and it's a new clause, it's 
very likely going to be a WCP form, and you want to translate it with the same translation value as the imperfect that came before it. All right. So note that as with the WCI forms above, there's a variety of ways that grammarians label this uh, form that functions this way. Some call it a WCP, which is what I've been calling it, Vav consecutive perfect. Some a perfect plus Vav consecutive. Some call it a V katal, using the verb katal and putting the V in front of it. So uh, that would mean, and uh, he will kill. Uh, and some call it a Vav conversive perfect. Okay, so uh, I will typically use this one. And uh, just like the other, I will often use vakatal as well, like I use sometimes vayiktal for that, 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 calling this form what it is. Now let's look at how you form the WCP form. We're going to compare the normal perfect with the WCP form. You learned pakad, pakada, pakata, pakat, pakati, right? Well, look at what these forms are like. He will appoint is u fakad. Now, where did this u come from? We just talked about this a little while ago. The normal pointing of the vav is with a vocal shiva. But vocal shiva with the vav becomes u before the letters bet, mem, and pe. We call those the bump consonants, right? B, M, P, bet, mem, pe. So, this would have been v fakad, but because pe is a bump letter, it becomes u. So, u fakad. But here's the, here's the thing to remember. Are we attaching a vav, pathak, and doubling dot to these perfect forms? No. So, the WCI form does that, but not the WCP. Okay? It uses a normal looking vav here. So, u fakad. He will appoint. So, pakad by itself, he appointed, normal pastime, ufakad, and he will appoint. Ufakada, and she will appoint. Normally, I have a dagesh lene here when the pe has no vowel pointing before it because pe is a begadkafat letter. But when I put that vowel point, this uh, vowel before the pe, that dagesh lene goes away, right? So, I do keep that in mind. So, ufakad, ufakada, she will appoint. Ufakata, you will appoint. Ufakat, you will appoint. Woman. And Ufakati, I will appoint. Ufakadu, they will appoint. Ufakatem, y'all will appoint. Ufakaten, y'all will appoint women. And Ufakadnu is we will appoint. All right. So basically, these forms look the same as the prior uh, perfect forms, except we're sticking a vav in front. Here's something uh, to remember about these WCP forms. They are built off of the perfect or the suffix conjugation pattern. And therefore, there are no nutty prefixes. No nutty prefixes. The vav is prefixed to root one of the verb, not to an imperfect prefix. Number two, the vav does not have a pathak or a dagesh forte. It looks like the normal, simple conjunction vav. And we talked about how with bet, mem, and pe, those labials require v to become the shurik, the oo sound. Number three, sometimes the stress will move back toward the final syllable on some of the perfect personal endings when they're consonantal endings. Where does my stress normally lie in the perfect? Normally on root two. Pakad, pakadta, pakad, pakadti, pakadnu, right? Normally going to find that stress on the second root letter. So if you look, look here, uh, sometimes that stress is going to move away from root two and farther back to the personal ending. And when that happens, that is characteristic of the WCP forms. Now, here, here's the, the important thing. This change of stress may happen with WCP forms. They do not have to happen with WCP forms. So, if you see the stress where it normally is, and there's a vav in front of it, it could be two possible things. 
But if the stress goes to the back, then it then it then it is the WCP form. So let's look at the the two examples here. The um, the first form is ufakati. That's a one cs. That's a one cs suffix, right? Ufakati. So there's really two ways to parse this. This could be the CalPerfect one cs with just a simple conjunction vav, and that would be and I appointed. This could also be a Cal WCP one cs, and there it would be I will appoint. Okay, it could be a non non past time form. Over here, number two, I have u. Fakati, with the stress moved to the back. There, that change of stress indicates that this is only a WCP form, and it's not a simple perfect that happens to have a conjunction in front of it. And so I'm going to translate that as, as an I will appoint. Okay? So that change of stress can happen sometimes. Um, the last thing I'd want to say about this is that the translation value of the WCP form will mirror the imperfect form that starts off the sequence. And so from your textbook, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 5, let's see, that is on page 139, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5. It's the second example right before 18.4. Okay, so look there real quickly. Page 139. Uh, we have Shema Yisrael. This is actually an imperative. Hear, O Israel. And then we have V'ahavta. That is a WCP form. It's not Hear, O Israel, and you loved, past time, but rather Hear, O Israel, and in keeping with that instructional nature, it's you shall love. Right? He's telling them what to do. Hear and love the Lord your God. Okay? So whatever that preceding verbs uh, nuances, the WCP forms will further those along uh, through the sequence of actions.